I'm here with the cast and the creator of The Mysteries of Udolfo. And for super fans, you might notice that we are in the Davilaroy house. So, what was everyone's favorite memory from, you know, being on set here? Oh, you remember being in the set? That, some of those pranks, I don't know. An old guy like me. Super pranker. You talking about, the the you talk about when Henry fell in the pool? <laughs> it wasn't a fall, it was a jump. It was, it was, I was maybe just flailing my arms for right. effect. What I'm was, the, sure. uh, what was the craziest on set prank? Hmm. Don't look at me. Well, he stole all of the left shoe in every pair of mine and the was, donuts, remember that? The donuts, the donuts and the toothpaste. Oh, I can't even eat a donut anymore. Move. My favorite Without part of, of everything okay. is always craft services. So I love to eat, as you can he tell. Sure and his favorite was the, always the donuts. <laughs> and, um, the you know, cream maybe, donuts. The cream donuts. So I was just kind of trying, maybe trying to get us into character, you know, increase the rivalry. That was probably why I did that. Uh, I put, to, I put toothpaste in all the cream donuts. Ooh. And, yeah. <laughs> Um, so what's the craziest like fan experience you guys have had? There was a huge fan following back ten years ago when this show became, you know, popular. But um, now that's gained even more fans over the last ten years. So what's like the craziest fan experience you've had? Mm. Any of you? There was this. Uh, well, there was this one guy that I remember followed you around at like every single press event we ever went to. He had an army jacket that every single time. <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> and, yeah. he, and he yeah. proposed to Sarai. At every single, at every single appearance. <laughs> Do you remember the crazy hair sniffer? The girl <laughs> that no, because no, you so never know awful. she's there, and all of a sudden you just can feel the <laughs> heat <laughs> of her breath on the back. <laughs> Where was the security? No, seriously, it was terrible. Oh, that was a little bit flattering, though. I'm not gonna lie. I never get compliments on my hair because I can't. <laughs> Do anything with it. So it's so, nice to receive a yeah, you know, hair sniffing I, compliment. I appreciate you at least, you know, smelling me. I actually had, I, I was overseas in uh, Manila on a project, and I had someone five years after the fact came up to me and just started petting my face. Ew, how'd they get just that close? To, well, I, did, I thought they were just going to come say hi. It's a nice face. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that. It's the perfect yeah. length of stubble every time. So now we are going to reenact a scene written by the brilliant Anne. And don't worry if you guys don't remember it, I have scripts for you guys. Okay, so for this scene, you will be reading the stage direction and you will play the role of the woman. And without further ado, action. Exterior to Villaroy House. Study, middle of the night. Mark St. Aubert is huddled over a laptop at a large, strong desk. He types furiously. His eyes are vacant and cold. Emily St. Aubert appears at the door, a tray of coffee, milk, and sugar in her hands. She wears PJs and a robe. Hey. He doesn't look up. Typical. I made coffee. His eyes barely tilt up to her. Did you burn it? She smiles. There he is. No. Well, I don't think so. She sniffs comically above the carafe. Honey, it's 4 a.m. What are you doing up? I just heard that you were still awake, so I thought... This makes him push back from his computer. He gives her a knowing look. I couldn't sleep. It's, uh, this guy. Why am I not surprised? I know I haven't known him that long, but I really like him. Who is he? Luke Valancourt. A darkness passes across Mark's face. He showed me around town when we first got here. I thought he might know something about De Villaroy. Stop! She's confused by his sharp tone. You have to stop. You can't talk to him about this house, or your mother, or anything. But we've been doing research. I know it sounds like some bad TV show, but I think we might actually be close to finding something. No, no, no. See? This is exactly the type of thing I'm talking about. You don't know these people like I do. Dad, he's a good person. He's a Valancourt. You can't... Footfalls, rustling, hollow thumps. What was that? The noises continue off in another room. Someone's in the house. Call 911. Stay here. He goes to a bookshelf in the corner of the room and reaches up under a lip at its base and pulls out a gun. Holy... But she slaps a hand to her face and silences herself. What the hell is happening? She watches her father curiously. Mark stalks his way forward, his gait and posture completely shifting. He's done this before. He rounds the corner and slips out of sight. After a moment of stupor, she pulls out her phone and dials. Oh, 
That's I'm the operator. <laughs> Nine one one. What's your emergency? I think there's someone in my house. Are they armed? I'm not sure. Stay quiet and find a safe place if you can. We're sending help now. Interior to Villaroy House, hallway night. Mark barely peeks his head around a corner to survey the terrain. A long hallway is empty before him. He works his way down it, methodically clearing doorways as he goes. Emily paces around the room. She still can't. She she can't sit still. She's going into shock, eyes wide and unfocused. Emily. Emily. She looks up to find Luke Valancourt standing outside the window, his hair and face dirty like he just rolled down a hill. Luke? What the hell are you doing here? I saw someone in the house. Where's your father? He told me to stay here. He took a gun. What? Luke climbs through the window, rushing to Emily's side. He gives her a once-over. Are you okay? But she's really crying now and can't speak. He holds her face in his hands. Hey, you with me? I will not lose you tonight, understand? She looks into his eyes, full of determination and truth. <laughs> the look that stole America's heart. <laughs> Interior to Villaroy House, foyer, night. Mark silently hugs a wall, gun at the ready. He looks around the corner to see a robber dressed in all black. They search through a bookshelf. We're close on the robber's hands for a moment and we see what they're looking for. The de Villaroy book. I wouldn't do that if I were you. The robber freezes with their hand on the book. Whatever you came for, I can pay you double for it. Out of Mark's sight, Luke appears outside on the porch. He watches this scene from outside the house. I'm a reasonable man. I'm sure we can come to an agreement. The robber slowly turns to face Mark. It's a woman with long hair and dark eyes. She's dressed in a long black cape. She gives him a confident, knowing smile. I doubt that. I can't let you take that. Seems like a lot of fuss for such a small thing. Put it back. I want answers. Just like you. Just like your daughter. You leave her out of this. She has nothing to do with... Nothing? She has everything to do with this. Luke slides along the exterior wall, heading toward the woman. What are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've been running from these secrets for too long. They finally caught up with you. That's it. Get out of my house. It's not your house, Mark. It's mine. And it's like Mark's been hit by a bus. All the color drains from his face. A deep and conniving smile twists the woman's lips. With a confident strut, she takes the book and heads for the door. Luke continues around toward the same door from the outside. He's going to head her off. I have tolerated your squatting thus far, but don't think I won't be checking in from time to time. We'll meet again, Mr. St. Albert. Give my regards to your wife. Fury burns in his eyes. Then, bang! Emily instantly perks up and can't help herself. She jumps up and runs out to see Mark rooted to the floor, still in shock. The gun clatters to the floor. The woman is gone and Luke is on the floor, blood covering his shoulder. Sirens are heard, coming this way. Emily rushes to Luke's side and cradles him in her arms. Luke! Luke, stay with me! He's losing blood, going into shock. He looks up at her with faraway eyes. Dad, what happened? I don't... I, he wasn't there! Um, uh, <laughs> Emily! I'm here. Uh, I... His eyes flutter closed. For a moment it seems like Emily will collapse into a puddle. But instead, determination takes the place of fear in her eyes, and she slaps Luke in the face. Should I? <laughs> no! You do not get to pass out mid-sentence. That is not how this is going down. Luke's barely conscious. His eyes dart about, and his face gets wider and wider. Hey! Hey! She puts a hand on his face and turns it toward her. I will not lose you tonight. Understand? I love you. And there it is, clear and strong, although quiet, from his weak voice. She's stunned. And then he passes out. Well done, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to check out the 10-year anniversary of the Mysteries of Udolpho. It is coming out soon.